Hi, Kali. Hope we're not intruding or anything. Is everything okay? <laughs> Too close. I, uh, I was preparing some stuff. Is it time already? Oh, no. I, I'm sorry. Don't worry. The Traveler and I only just met up. We were just worried that you might get lost along the way, so we thought that we'd come get you. Thank you. I'm ready to join you now. Um, how's that thing going? So let's pick up where we left off. Next up is the third line. One who would never lie. Hmm. Anyone spring to mind? Uh, you really think so? Seems like it would be pretty difficult for someone in his position to avoid having to lie. Then what about Kaya? He's the cavalry captain and a rather popular figure, but... You think there's something fishy about him too, huh? Yeah, he's definitely a sneaky one. Bet he lies all the time! Hmm... I can't help but agree with you there. There's the tone-deaf bard! Ugh. But on second thought, he wouldn't qualify either. He talks way too much nonsense. Hmm. Is there anyone else for Becky? Acting Grandmaster Jean? She has a good name in that regard. But from what I know, she sometimes covers up the truth out of concern for those around her. For example, when Lisa loses track of time in the library and misses her patrol shift, Jean will come up with some excuse, like Lisa's ill today. Also, she sometimes makes up stories to get Klee to behave, like the one about the big monster that comes to catch naughty kids who don't go to bed on time. Do you think that rules her out? Hmm. White lies are still lies, but do we really have to reject her because of some harmless fibs? It's not like she had evil intentions. No! We're the ones being strict! Rosaria doesn't strike me as the type of person to lie. Oh, Kale, you probably haven't met her yet, have you? She's a sister from the church who looks, um, a little scary and not very sociable. She stopped by the alchemy bench once, a long time ago, and asked me about Albedo. I thought maybe she was trying to find him, for work or something. But when I asked, she just said that she was curious about him because he was so intelligent, and wanted to talk to his assistant to find out what he was like. A lot of people might have given a more tactful justification, but I could see in her face that she wasn't trying to hide anything. She was just very direct and straightforward. That's why I don't think of her as the lying type. Rosaria doesn't look like the sort of person you'd want to get into a fight with. Maybe she just fights her way out of situations that some people might lie to get out of. I can definitely see that. I've also heard the other sisters say that Rosaria doesn't even make excuses when she skips choir. She just doesn't show up. She's a tough cookie, huh? Let's put her name down. In that case, I think Sino fits in this list, too. Ah, true. Lying's probably more trouble than it's worth for someone like him. Kinda like with Rosaria. Oh, and Paimon also nominates Razor. Bet he couldn't lie to save his life. I've also got someone else in mind. Noelle, the trainee knight. She's a very honest person. I don't think she'd tell a lie. Alrighty, write her name down too! Wait, there's one more person. You know, our long-standing staffer at the alchemy bench. Huh? You mean Timaeus? Yes, him. Um, truth be told, He's been love-struck recently. He swore that he wouldn't say a dishonest word or slack off until he succeeds in getting the woman he loves. Timaeus has a crush? Yes, that's right. Well, who is 
Hey, do you know her? I've never met her. All I know is that she's from Miyue. To me, it says that she's fun, has a great personality, and is very, very good looking. Since we're on the topic, helping Timaeus win the Lady of His Dreams was also one of my goals for this Windbloom Festival. But how can we help with that? I don't know. Make sure he uses nice paper and a fancy envelope when he sends letters to her. Help him pick a nice gift and wrap it properly. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah! I had the same situation once in the Avidia Forest. I helped another forest ranger out by delivering a love letter to the co-worker she likes. Yep, that sort of thing exactly. Oh, also, I helped him with some of the groundwork for one of his research projects. He must have appreciated it, because he gave me a refrigeration device that he's been developing as a thank you gift. Is it any good? Um, I mean, it looks nice. <laughs> Sounds like a no. Hmm. All right. Guess we'll put Loverboy down on the list then. Okay. So, last of all, we have a legend that never ends. Anyone come to mind for this particular line? Lisa, perhaps? A librarian understands books best, and aren't most legends written down somewhere? When I think about legends, fairy tales and picture books come to mind. Maybe Kai! She read a lot of fairy tales when Tainari was teaching her to read. Oh, do I count? Of course you do. I'll put you on the list. I prefer to read things like... An illustrated analysis of alchemical substances and their uses, the fascinating principles of crafting, and hypotheses of life. Ah, uh, point taken. Paimon didn't quite understand any of those. Hmm. Glee might be a good choice. Her mother, Alice, is a renowned traveling author, so I'll bet she's been exposed to all sorts of myths and legends. Well, that should just about do it. Next up, we should go and ask the people on the list about the prophecy. Do we have to ask absolutely everyone on the list? It seems like a lot of people. It is. So, I was thinking that perhaps we should split up? That might make our search more effective. Okie dokie! Also, I thought of a method of gathering feedback. We can do that. You and the Traveler are practically joined at the hip, so you two can go together. I'll pair up with Kale. Capable Kale and Sensible Sucrose. Sounds like a winning combination. Okay. I promise I'll help. Capable Kale. Yeah, I got this. Rest assured that the unbeatable Traveler and Paima will do our part too. Off we go. I plan on starting from the person with the most defined stronghold. So, let's go to the library. Lisa should be there. Stronghold? That's an... uh... interesting word to use. Um... maybe... den? No, that's even worse. How about... Slayer? Here we are, Lisa's lair. 
Oh no, that was a bad word choice. Now Seacrest is using it. It's all my fault. Lisa, might I ask if... Huh? Sucrose? Kale? What are you doing here? I can only suppose that they were Kale-ing on someone. At least uh, that's as far as I know. Oh, please, just stop it with these puns. I beg you! Are you trying to win worldwide fame for unfunny jokes? Um, is Lisa not here at the moment? Surprising, isn't it? She went out. I'm afraid it's just us here looking for information. Except me. I'm not here for information. Like you, I came here for an abortive search for the librarian, who is also my academia senior. Oh! So you studied in the same darshan as Lisa? That's right. Her mentor in Sumeru was also my benefactor. We were both Spontamod students. <sighs> wow. That's cool. But, wait. We're getting sidetracked. We came here to look for some information. Kale and I are investigating a prophecy. And we were hoping you all might be able to help. Oh? What sort of prophecy? Hmm, I see. You want to ask them about the flower that is not of this world, and me about the one who would never lie. But there's no rush! You don't need to answer right away. We're just here to tell you about the situation. You can take your time to think it over and submit any thoughts you have in written form to the Sucrose mailbox. The Sucrose mailbox? <laughs> yep. I was thinking about it on the way. And although they seem like trick questions, there's a lot to mull over once you get down to the details. A quick answer off the top of your head might not go into enough depth. So... I decided to place a mailbox next to the alchemy crafting table. Everyone can submit their written answers there when they're ready. We don't have to call it the Sucrose mailbox, though. It could just as well be called the Sucrose and Kale mailbox. Or even the Sucrose, Kale, Traveler, and Paimon mailbox. <laughs> I think in this case, we can just go with your quick answer off the top of your head. Sounds like a good solution. Certainly more reliable than verbal discussion alone. Agreed. Certainly when it comes to discerning whether someone is a liar or not, you cannot simply take them at their word. Understood. Once we've had a look into it, we'll place our replies into your mailbox. Thank you all so much. Okay, let's take them off the list and carry on working our way down. Mm-hmm. Already done. I'm pleasantly surprised to see those two introverts getting along so well. Do you get the feeling that Kale's return to Mondstadt has emboldened her more contrarian side? Yes, I'd noticed that too. Traveling and meeting old friends are both good for the body and soul. And isn't rediscovering one's youth while revisiting old haunts a worthwhile pursuit? When I first met Kale, she'd never known happiness or youth, but things are different now. Her Elazar being cured was a huge milestone in her life. Kale is a very sensitive and introverted child. I'm sure you must have noticed that too, Albedo. From the time she's been in my care, I've observed that she's actually a very lively character by nature. But she had a very rough start in life, and it changed her. So, might I assume that your respective claims of looking for plants and artists in Mondstadt were just... pretexts? I wouldn't say that. Both Kale and Genius Invocation TCG are very important to me. Would it really kill you to just say yes in this situation? Fine. Yes. We came out of concern for Kale. She's been back to Mondstadt of her own accord several times. But it has led to no significant improvement in her mood. Well, it won't hurt to give her some more time. I believe that Sucrose might be able to help her. 
Sounds like an extension of your own self-confidence as your teacher. You could say that. In a similar vein, I've heard that Sumeru scholars often build their social relationships based on their academic ones. Is that true? I suppose it might look like that from your perspective. Sumeru society is something of a special case. The reason it is known as the City of Learning is because all of its resources are in some way linked to academia. As such, academic resources equate to social capital. It is not unheard of, for example, for people to build a family in order to pursue further studies. But the relationship between the three of us is not an academic one turned social. We've never even worked on a paper together, for starters. Oh, so the academic paper is the nexus of the academic family. Hmm, interesting. I would think of us more as siblings. An equal and pure relationship, unaffected by academic considerations. As much as I'd prefer not to admit it, that statement is not inaccurate. I can understand that position. I have a younger sister myself, and it's only natural for me to be protective of her. What you described fits the idea of a city of learning, as I imagine it. The family is where all social relationships intersect. As such, a family founded on common goals may actually be more stable. By the way, who's the eldest between you? Uh, let's not go down this rabbit hole, please. In terms of age, I'm the eldest, of course. He just doesn't want to admit it. But your mental age is younger than that. I dare say even by enough to be the youngest sibling. Perhaps I could bring Kale into this happy family to be your elder sister. No. You will never see me admit to being the youngest sibling. Except perhaps as a last-ditch effort to turn the tables in a game of cards. here. Huh? Even Lisa's here. Hey there, Traveler and Paimon. It's been a while. How have you been? We've been doing pretty well. You look surprised, cuties. Is it because of me? Teacher is not at the usual place. <laughs> oh, please. It's not as if I'm glued to my chair. I like to get out for a little fresh air every once in a while. Mika's here today, so I thought it'd be a good time to introduce him to Bennett and Razor. They're all out and about quite often, so it's helpful for them to get to know one another. <clears throat> uh, hello, everyone. M my name is Mika.
I look forward to working with you. No need to be so formal. We've known them for ages. They're cool. Wind blow. Fun? Actually, we haven't gotten to the fun part yet. We've been busy investigating a prophecy. A prophecy? What kind? A good one or a bad one? Gosh, that all sounds quite fascinating. I can't believe I made it onto your list of names. Do you really think I'll be able to help? Believe in yourself. Right. Believe in yourself. You're a first-rate adventurer, Bennett. Okay, then in that case, I'll step up and present my thoughts on the matter. Uh, except I forgot I'm not really good at organizing my thoughts. Oops. Oh, there's no need to tell us all of your thoughts right here and now. Sucra said she'll put a mailbox next to the crafting bench, so you can just write down your thoughts when they come to you, and drop them there. A meticulous and efficient plan. Yep, that sounds like Sucrose. I will think also. Give me some time. You still have other people on your list that you need to go see, right? We should leave you to it. Don't worry about us. We'll drop off our letters at the mailbox as soon as we're done. Okay, bye for now. Let's head over to Star Snatch Cliff next. Maybe we'll be able to find some people there. And even if we don't find any familiar faces, you can see really far from up at the top. Maybe we can find people that way. Oh, you're working so hard. Do be sure to get some rest when you can. If you get tired, you know you're always welcome to visit me for a break and a cup of tea. next let me check my notes huh this way got it Kali please follow me animal test 6308 It's our lucky day. There are several people over there. Amber? Wow! And you live with her too! Hmm? Oh, it's Sucrose! And Klee also spies! Mm, the girl with the long scarf! We were just talking about you. Ah, oh, right. I don't think you've been introduced to Noel before. Kale, this is Noel, maid of the Knights of Favonius. Nice to meet you, Kale. I missed you the last few times you were in Mondstadt, so I'm glad to finally meet you in person. Uh, 
nice to meet you too, Noel. My name is Pollen. But you already knew that. Relax, you two. There's no need to be so courteous. We're not on some kind of diplomatic mission here. Klee, what are you doing here? Are you planning to blast some fish? Nope. Klee's on patrol with the other knights. Huh. Now that you mention it, it looks like everyone here is a knight of Favonius except for Kawai and me. I heard that there was a very young knight in the ranks, but it's still a surprise to see with my own eyes. Kawai, what do you do? I'm a trainee forest ranger in the Avidia Forest. Trainee? It means I'm not officially a fully qualified forest watcher yet. I'm still learning. Oh, you're just like me. I'm still working towards becoming a fully qualified knight. Technically, though the distinction is hardly relevant right now. This isn't a very formal patrol. We're just chatting. <sighs> Don't panic, Kali. Just pick a topic and join the conversation. Don't panic. Whatever you do, don't panic. It's just Amber and her friends. There's no need to be nervous. Let me guess. Are you chatting about the new guests in town? Yep. A few folks from Sumeru have come to visit, so we're brainstorming a few nice surprises for them. Amber! Ah! Uh, sorry, I, uh... <laughs> at least I didn't say anything about what the surprises are. Oh, no. How am I supposed to join this conversation now? What do I say to that? Speaking of nice surprises, we've actually had a fairly big one recently. What kind of surprise? Tell me, tell me! Uh, I'm saved. Sucrose has given me a lead-in. Now, I just need to follow on from what she's already started talking about. Hmm, what an interesting prophecy. I have no idea what the answers could be, though. So, essentially, you're gathering information to help you solve the riddles, correct? I'll do my best to help. Thank you so much, Eula. Anytime. There's no need to answer right away. We'll put a mailbox next to the crafting bench for people to drop us a note once they've thought of something. I'll drop something in there for sure. Nice idea. I think we can all commit to writing a note. We'll see what we can come up with. Yep, don't worry. You can count on us. But we do have to finish our patrol first. What route are you taking today? We started in the Stormbearer Mountains, and we'll end at the city gates. You'd be very welcome to join us, but it sounds like you're pretty busy with all this. Um... No. There's always next time. We'll join up with you after we're done working through this prophecy. Oh, yeah. So, um... We'll be on our way for now. <laughs> See you later. Have a safe trip back. Are you okay, Kali? Uh, was it that obvious? No, no, not at all. It just looked like you had something on your mind. Mm, so that means it was obvious. Aww. Whatever is bothering you, you can talk to me about it if you want. I'm happy to help. Thanks, Sucrose. Well, uh, the truth is, I don't really know how to act around Amber and the others. Really? I thought you two were good friends. We are. Amber's a really important friend to me. I don't know. I guess if I'm being completely honest, the problem's probably with me. The first time I came to Mondstadt, I was really immature. I didn't want to let people in, and I was generally pretty awful to everyone. Amber was the one person who didn't give up on me, and if it wasn't for her persistence, I wouldn't have found a friend at all. Without Amber, I might not even be here today. And because of that, I really look up to her. I think of her as my role model, in hopes that maybe one day, 
I could learn to be like her. But after trying and failing for several years, I think I finally realized. I'm no Amber, and I never will be. Looking back, it seems silly that I ever thought like that, or nothing alike at all. My personality's so... <laughs> weird. I always get so anxious and I overthink everything. Oh, Kali. Don't say that. <laughs> um, Sucrose? Would it be okay if I... told you a bit about my past? knew bits and pieces about her but still why did she have to go through all that <sighs> i'm sorry we've only just met and i'm already dumping all of this on you this is why i get so frustrated at myself i'm always doing this i get into a spiral of self-doubt and then i end up having to find somewhere to vent it all out no 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 it's fine <sighs> i'm I'm really glad that you're willing to tell me all this. People don't open up about their deepest feelings unless they really trust the other person. Don't you think? At least, I think it's kind of an honor. And, I mean, um, you probably noticed by now, but I don't have the best social skills either. I always just end up talking about the things I'm interested in. And going on, and on. But even so, you still listen to me when I talk my head off about alchemy. <laughs> it's a relief to listen to you talking about yourself for once. If you hadn't told me all of those things, I never would have guessed that you struggle so much. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like we're very similar people. R really? Yeah. Everyone has their own problems to deal with. I certainly do. All the feelings that you talked about just now. I totally get it. It takes so much more effort for us introverts to fit into a crowd. When you were saying about how you try to think about what to say in advance, and you're constantly terrified of saying the wrong thing and making things awkward, I relate to that so much. Oh, and also that part about studying under a genius. In fact, before meeting you, I never met anyone who seemed so similar to myself. Oh. Um. I'm not very good at giving words of comfort or anything. And I'm not gonna tell you to just get over it or stop worrying about it. How about we just sit here for a little while? We don't have to force a conversation if we can't think of anything. We can just... sit here together. Sucrose has stopped talking, but for some reason, this doesn't feel awkward at all. Maybe she's right, and we're more similar than I realized. In Sumeru, I always like to find a quiet place to just sit and watch the scenery, but it's always by myself. I never thought there'd be a day when I could do this with someone else by my side. Mondstadt's breeze is so gentle and soft. Hey, Kali. See that cloud over there? Doesn't it look like... One of my test tubes? Um... Uh... I don't think so. Uh, sorry. <laughs> then... Maybe we're not quite on the same wavelength on everything. At least... Not when it comes to looking at clouds in the sky. <clears throat> Thank you, Sucrose. I feel much better after talking to you. Yeah. It helps a lot, doesn't it? I also vent to my flasks, sometimes. The next time we get the chance, I have to show you my tetratanic sweet flower. And my tetratanic wind bloom. Your tetra... what? Two of my favorite things I've made. They're really cool. I think you might like them. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, you'll definitely have to show them to me sometime. 
I brought some crackers with me. You want one? There's cheese flavor or tomato flavor. Sure. Hmm, I'll try the cheese one. Aw, look! They're enjoying the scenery together. Hmm, shall we go play with them? No, it's fine. Let them sit for a while. We're not what Kale needs right now. She needs a new friend. Someone different, who's never met her before. Hmm, I don't get it. Is there a difference? There is. You'll understand once you're a little older, Klee. People can draw different kinds of strength from different kinds of friends. And right now, Kali needs someone that's just not the same old me. Take it easy. We find someone we need here. Help! Oh, I beg you, please don't let go. <sighs> Who's that yelling? Let's hurry and take a look. Timaeus? And we also have Rosaria and Mona? What kind of mishmash ensemble is this? Good question. What kind of a motley crew is this? It's been a while, Traveler. You two are looking pretty good. I trust you've been well. Yep, we're definitely faring a lot better than this poor guy on the ground. Hey, please don't rub salt in my wound. I really have been trying my best. Oh, you don't want to talk. If this sister hadn't grabbed you in time, then you'd have been seriously hurt, if not dead. I know, I know. I really am grateful, miss. I can't thank you enough. Don't mention it. Just lending a hand. Quite literally. And had she not lent him a hand and pulled him up, he would have gone tumbling down the cliffside. What happened? Did Timaeus almost fall off the cliff? Uh, well, so what actually happened was... I came to Star Snatch Cliff today to pick some flowers and ran into Mona on the way. She took a look at her scry glass and advised me to turn back because it would be dangerous. But you still came up here anyway? Well, yes, I did, because there's something I just had to do. Oh, I hardly think giving flowers to your crush is worth throwing one's life away for. It's rare to run into someone with a death wish in this area. I don't have a death wish. I just uh, didn't think it would really come true. I mean, when Mona said it would be dangerous, I, I thought I'd be fine as long as I watched my step cautiously. I'm, I'm sorry, okay? I, I was wrong. I'm telling you, I'm just here chasing the love of my life. Love struck Mondstadters is what the Windbloom Festival is all about. Okay, that explains you. But why is Rosaria here? I was looking for a quiet place to escape the crowds. I wasn't planning on having to save a life along the way. So that's why the Scryglass just showed danger instead of fatal danger. <laughs> Very funny. Anyway, uh, Traveler and Paimon, uh, what brings the two of you to Star Snatch Cliff? Just trying our luck. We've got a lot of people we need to see today, so we've been all over the place. Actually, you're some of the people we were looking for. Huh? Huh, I see. 
see. So, all we'll need to do is find some clues, make a note, and drop it off at the mailbox? I, I can't believe there's a prophecy like this, and let alone that I have a part to play in it. Oh, I guess this means everyone will find out about my crush now. <laughs> I, I came here because I wanted to give some Cecilia's to the girl I love. They'll really suit her. She's... No, 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 no one asked. Please, do not subject us to your gushing about your girlfriend. Uh, oh, you saw right through me. You said you need clues, right? And in that case, Mona Magistus the Astrologist will provide you with a personally handwritten letter. Just wait for it to show up in your mailbox. You can be on your way now. We won't keep you any longer. Alright, then let's head back for now and meet up with everyone else. Will do. Uh, this is all so embarrassing. Uh, thank you both. Everything go well? Yep, we managed to find and talk to everybody. We got back a little early, so we took some time just now to put the mailbox together. We got really lucky today. The vendors were feeling super generous, so we didn't even need to pay for the materials. It's just a shame that Kale got a splinter. Uh, don't worry about me. I'm used to working in the rainforest. I get splinters all the time. I've already taken care of it. We've already wrapped up everything on our to-do list for today. So, all we need to do now is wait for everyone's letters to arrive. Traveler, Paimon, why don't you get some rest while I keep an eye on the mailbox? You're definitely your master's student, Sucrose. As long as you or Albedo are around, Paimon can relax and know that everything's taken care of. <sighs> Stop. You're embarrassing me. Uh, wait. Actually... One thing that still needs taken care of. I'm on starving. Hey, traveler, you want to get dinner? Your treat. I'll go with Sucrose to return the leftover materials to the vendors. You two, go get a proper meal. We can't have anyone going hungry. Yeah, now would be a good time for a break. Once everything is ready... Let's meet up here again and collate all the information we've gathered. Sounds like a plan. This one? Ooh, and this one. Hey, Paimon's really hungry. And don't forget, Paimon's also ordering for you, too. It's not like Paimon's gonna eat everything by herself. Is everything packed up and ready? What do you think about meeting up at five to go to my house? Yes, everything's ready. I packed some great wine and smoked ham. Oh, your parents will love it. <clears throat> ham? Look, we've known each other for quite some time now. Don't you think it's been long enough for you to remember that we only eat bacon in my house? Hmm, I must remember to get some milk today on my way home. Please, feel free to pay a visit to Cat's Tail anytime. Enjoying the scenery? Oh, Tone Jeff Bard! Are you here for some food as well? Uh-huh! 
Oh, I can put something on your tab? Well, that's a pity. I already had a few drinks before coming here. I shall take you up on your kind offer another day. There should be no shortage of opportunities in the future. Anywho, you should be getting ready to thank me. I come bearing good news. Hmm? What kind of good news? Behold! What is it? It's what you need the most right now. <laughs> the answer to the prophetic puzzle. Simply head to the location marked on the map and you'll find the lantern you've been looking for. However, if I were you, I wouldn't just go and reveal the secret right away. As you've seen, a lot of people have been laboring hard to uncover the answer. A secret is like a well-aged brew. The aroma from the bottle is sweetest when revealed in the company of friends. Then it's settled. I'll leave you to your business for now. Feel free to find me for a chat again once you're done working through the prophecy. <laughs> also, if you have some time, we could organize another fast-track love poem class. Oh, you're starting that up again? I sure am. Nobody else has signed up this year, though, so the duty to learn falls on you. <laughs> anyway, see you later. Frenzy always looks so relaxed whenever we run into him. Uh, Paimon can't help but be jealous. Excuse me, if you don't mind. Could I chat with you for a moment? Oh? Who are you? You may call me Scarlet. Just like you, I'm a traveler visiting Mondstadt from another land. Mind if I buy you a drink? Leaving the door open for another time, I see. I can tell that you've dealt with a lot of people during your travels. You can tell? Well, we are very experienced adventurers after all. I can't. That's why I tried to strike up a conversation with you in the first place. I was on my way to go shopping earlier when I overheard your conversation next to the crafting bench. From what I could gather, you are trying to investigate a bizarre prophecy? Yep, bizarre is definitely the word. Uh, don't you think it sounds just like the kind of story that would happen in Mondstadt? <sighs> anyway, that's why I wanted to ask you a favor. If and when you manage to unravel the answer to the prophecy, could you let me know what it is? Not so much the prophecy itself, but Mondstadt as a nation. That's what I'm interested in. I was born in a distant land, but I have family and friends who once lived in Mondstadt for a long time. They said that it's a great place full of fairy tales and romance and recommended that I come for a visit. As it happens, someone I know has an anniversary coming up soon. So I figured this would be a good time to come here and see all the sights that she once saw. What do you think about Mondstadt so far? It certainly lives up to its name as the city of romance and freedom. <laughs> we think so, too. So, about the prophecy. Thank you. You're very friendly. It's been a real pleasure to meet you. I'll leave it to you then. I hope you continue to enjoy the city and have a wonderful day. She definitely isn't dressed like the locals, huh? Where do you think her hometown could be? Please find me a flower that is not of this world, and a guy that will never get lost. Find me one who would never lie, as well as a legend that never ends. Huh? <laughs> huh? 
I never thought I'd have someone secretly following me, even in a free city like Mondstadt. <sighs> Good day to you, miss. <laughs> <laughs>